الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستحده ونستغفره وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده والنبي والرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم Brothers and sisters Today walhamdulillah we begin praising Allah and seeking Allah's guidance and Allah's protection and Allah's forgiveness and bearing witness walhamdulillah that there is nothing worthy of our worship except Allah and Allah alone and reminding ourselves walhamdulillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been sending guides and messengers and prophets throughout the millennia always helping humankind to be guided toward what is right and culminating that line of prophets with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam today I want to remind you alhamdulillah to take just a moment a moment, alhamdulillah, of gratitude to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this guidance. And the exchange of that gratitude is, alhamdulillah, to help someone else who perhaps is not blessed as much as you. Subhanallah, I am reminded in the language of the Qur'an when we think about Isa ibn Maryam the one they call Jesus the son of Mary salam, that his companions are referred to in the Qur'an and the words are placed in their mouths saying Nahnu and saw Allah say that we are helpers of Allah today walhamdulillah I would like to invite you to become helpers of Allah you know maybe many of you should know by now that I grew up a Christian I was raised going to church regularly and sometimes people will ask the question how did you become a Muslim what was it about Islam that drew your attention and walhamdulillah for me if you were to ask me what is the simple answer to what brought me and people like me to Islam it was what Imam Shafi Rahim Alalik says that if there was nothing else of the Quran revealed except this it would have been enough to guide all of mankind womankind to Islam to the Surat al mustaqim Surat Al-Asr and the ayah, particularly in Surah Al-Asr, that is the turning point for myself and many of us. Inna ladina aminu wa aminu salihat. Those people, alhamdulillah, who are the winners, who are the successful, they are the ones who they have a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a connection and they follow it by being helpers of Allah by engaging in amal salih had deeds that are righteous when I was growing up and I know many people alhamdulillah maybe issues of aqidah didn't bother them three God, two God, one God, Th those issues may not have bothered them. Shirk. <coughs> because they, they engage in different kinds of good behavior. 
But for me and people like me, the notion that there is only one God worthy of worship, who has no partner and no associate, that, that the unity of Allah, the Tawheed, drew me, alhamdulillah, to say this is what the Torah was talking about. This is what Isa ibn Maryam was talking about. Now that I understand that, subhanAllah, I should then follow that with Amr al-Salihat. And I found the only people that I found in America who I believe were the best example of this were those who say, Shadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Some time ago, I was in Afghanistan. And I was talking to some of the people in Afghanistan, maybe because they were wondering, how can you be an American Muslim? And subhanAllah, they were concerned about the future of their country because uh, there are so many international forces. Are they going to take Islam away from them? And I shared with them that, if you knew, you wouldn't be afraid. If you have this connection with Allah and you follow with the Amal of Salihat, you will be successful. That for me and many people like me, when we met Muslims who came to America, who came from Afghanistan, they came from Sudan, they came from uh, uh, Nigeria, they came from all over, Senegal. We met them Egyptians and subhanAllah, from seeing their example, we could see the example of what the Quranic message was and what was the example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There are many people who say, you know, I'm glad that I met Islam before I met Muslims. For me, alhamdulillah, I met Muslims before I met Islam. And it was the example that they set Let me take that back. It's the example that you set. That while I, alhamdulillah, before I accepted Islam, I saw you. I saw the Ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu I saw, as Martin Luther King said, the most segregated hour in America is Sunday at 11 o'clock. That's where when they come to worship, the black go to one place, the white go to another, the Latino find his own, the, the Korean is, has another one. And the most integrated hour, alhamdulillah, in America, is the Sa'a of Yom al -Jumwa. You should be grateful to Allah. Now, alhamdulillah, do we have problems? Yes. We have problems. Are we perfect? We're not perfect. Are we the best? There's a different answer, you know. I may not be perfect, I may not be the best in other things, but alhamdulillah, when you compare this ummah to the others, we have the best example. Because we're following in the example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But we have problems. Allah reminds us in the Quran, Surah Nisa, men are the maintainers and the protectors of women because they provide for them from what Allah has provided to them. Men are the maintainers and the protectors of women because Allah has mandated for them that the men will provide and protect the women. Now, one of the things that I, that I loved about Islam, a brother told me, he said, you know brother, in America maybe you say, I'll protect my wife and I'll maintain my wife. 
I'll maintain my daughter, but I'm not maintaining your daughter. And I'm not maintaining your wife. That alhamdulillah, because of the injunction of the Quran, all of the women in this community on this planet fall under the jurisdiction of this ayah. This masjid, alhamdulillah, you should be proud to say, when they say, where did you pray Jumwa? said, I prayed at Dara Hijrah. Why? They said, because in that masjid, they talk the talk and they walk the walk. Because it is the only masjid that I know of in America that houses homeless women in the coldest months of the year in America. Right in there. Why? Because men are the maintainers and the protectors of women. The burden, alhamdulillah, is on us. Why? Why? Maybe there's some people who don't know. In America right now, if a man works and a woman works, the level of compensation of pay for the same job for a woman is less. They say a woman makes 72 cents for every dollar that a man makes in America. They work the same job. There's still some problems in America. And therefore, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, SubhanAllah, I, you know, the reason that I say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not because somebody said you should say it. I say it, I get a certain feeling when I say it because I think about how would I have functioned if I didn't have the example of Rasulullah If I didn't have his example, maybe I'll function differently. But when I hear the khutbah wada of the Prophet Wasallam, he knows he's going to be gone soon. He says, I'm, I, I don't know if I'll be with you next year, but I'm going to give you some warning. And one of those is to be careful how you care for your women. SubhanAllah, in this community we have many refugee women. We have many women who are widows. We have many women in this community who are divorced with no family to support them. No, the Bilal, we have some women who have become orphaned. There's no family here to provide for them. We are their family. And some of them, and I know you, I know you, you say, Imam, that sister right there, she a nice sister, I'd like to marry her. But she's too old. And she's been married before and she has children, I don't want that. So who's supposed to provide for her? The simple answer is we are. And so, alhamdulillah, the hadith attributed to the Prophet وسلم, said that none of you will be a believer until you want for your brother, parenthetically your sister, what you want for yourself. I love Islam. Allah's Messenger وسلم, is conflating your relationship with Allah, your Iman, with how well you care for your neighbor, for your brother, for your sister. And you are not a believer if, alhamdulillah, you discriminate against the other one because, well, you're not really close to me. You're not a believer until you love for them what you love for yourself. You see, alhamdulillah, the condition that we have right now. And you think back about the people who lived with the Prophet sallallahu who were migrants. They left their homes and they came to a little town called Yathrib. Later become known because of the light of Rasulullah sallallahu as Medina Munawwara. I think about them to say, subhanallah, you in Dar Hijrah. Dar al-Hijrah, 
the place where people migrate, Dar Hijra. Me, I came from Brooklyn. I didn't migrate very far. Many of you, you migrated from long distances, alhamdulillah, to come to this place. The people who made hijrah with the Prophet sallallahu The Ansar, they said, we're going to help the Muhajirun. We'll have a compact between them because they're immigrants. How can we help them? Help them when they come to, after they made the migration feast of Bilillah, how can we help them? So some of the Ansar, they said, we'll give, you, we'll give you some money, help you get started. One famous Sahabi, he said, no, I don't need any money. I don't want welfare. I don't want a handout. What I want is, take me and show me the marketplace. And if you show me the marketplace, I'll be all right. Now, for many of you who know this Riwaya, I'm not sure if we take the whole message. Show me the marketplace doesn't mean take me downtown and drop me off. That's not what it means. Today, if you were saying, okay, not literally drop me off, but it means network me. Come on, brother, you're new here. I'm with you. Let me show you the ropes. Let me introduce you to some people that I know. Uh, let me go to some brothers who are trading or sisters who are trading and I'll put in a good word for you and then they'll say, all right, well, we'll give you a shot. Maybe we'll advance you some, some, some merchandise because Akhjohari is our friend and if he says you're good, then you're good. Maybe it requires some special knowledge on how to network, how the system works. Maybe you need some skills. So then you teach them how to fish. You know, they have a proverb that says, if you, if you give a man a fish, he eats for a day. But if you teach him how to fish, he'll eat for a lifetime. Well, alhamdulillah, this is what we're doing in Dar Hijra now. There are many women who are in that state of weakness. And we have launched a program to teach them how to fish. We're using the resources of the community, but we're going to teach them how to become self-sufficient. And one of those programs, bi'idhnillah, is a new program that every woman who is needy, rather than coming for a handout, we will teach her, alhamdulillah, a skill. That, alhamdulillah, she can become productive, self-sufficient. It's a very simple program, Bill Carson. Sisters sign up, they learn how to sew. How to mend clothing. Alhamdulillah, in America, everybody still wears clothing. Trust me, they had an idea how they can get past that, but for right now, everybody wears clothing. So usually, if you need something sewn, not like you can't go to your grandmother. Like when you back home, you just take it to one of the ladies they sew for you. It doesn't work like in America. So Alhamdulillah, and every sister who joined this program, when she finishes the training, we'll give her her own sewing machine. And they laugh that they might become self-sufficient. SubhanAllah, I want to ask you today to support our programs. But they laugh that we can teach our sisters how to become self-sufficient. And that support is how we will maintain and protect them from homelessness and poverty. Bismillah that Allah might reward us with something better in this life and in the hereafter.
والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما بعد. None of you will believe until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. I'm encouraging you, Bidnillah, today, and I want to tell you a very short story, Bidnillah, about how it works. Many years ago, I was counseling a family, and a good friend of mine just arrived, Reverend Graylin Hagler. And he's going to share some words after Salah, but Graylin, right in our community in Washington, where not far from where your church is, there was a woman, she was married to a very close friend of mine. They got divorced. She was left with children, and she had been the primary caretaker. She didn't uh, have any job. And when she went to court, the judge said, Miss, I'm going to give you six months of alimony and after that you're on your own. Child support not enough to really raise a child properly. But every year we had in that community in DC we would put together a small committee for Zakat al-Fitr after Ramadan and we would come up with the names of different families and we would put together a committee and the committee's job was to review and to make sure that this person is good character and they have a legitimate need and so on so that the zakat is spent in the best way. Because that's going to bring more ajr to the people who give it. So alhamdulillah, one of the elements of the, the program is that when you are selected, the committee representative will come to your house and they say, Assalamu alaikum, we know that uh, your family uh, can use this zakat al-fitr. Please read the agreement. You signed that you accepted so much money, so there's no corruption. And you're under no obligation, and it's anonymous. No one knows except the committee members who is getting the zakat. To preserve your dignity. Isn't that what Islamic relief says? Right? That we want to preserve the dignity of people, even if they're poor. So alhamdulillah, we supported this family. Oh, one time, some years later, I'm looking through the community for new community members. So I ask a sister who is a lawyer, upstanding sister, sister, will you serve on this committee, the cattle fitter? And it goes like this, kether, 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 and you have to make the letter and you give. She said, I know, brother. I said, really, how do you know? She said, because when my husband divorced me, I got the letter. And I signed the letter, and I got the zakat al fitr to feed my children. She said, so I'd be glad to serve. But that little help that it gave me Help me move to become self-sufficient. So she went from being the lower hand to being the upper hand. You don't know what you're doing when you help a family. When you help them become self-sufficient, you don't, you don't really know because when you see them again and they're, they're doing well, there are hundreds of families in this community, sisters, who for whatever reason have to come and ask for our help. Brothers and sisters, it's my hope, inshallah, you will join us at our fundraising dinner Sunday night. The theme of this dinner is building self-sufficiency and independence from those people in our community. And by the way, for those of you who thought that America was going to take care of you, them they, well, what they used to say is farewell to welfare. Farewell to welfare. The government is giving up on it. And they're turning to nonprofits and faith based communities like ours. I know somebody's asking, well, Imam, what about the men? 
SubhanAllah, we just started a program with Fairfax County. If you're a senior citizen and you're unemployed, you need to be retrained. If you qualify, you can sign up. And we have one brother, Ibrahim. He's, uh, I think he's from uh, Côte d'Ivoire, who's working with us now in the masjid. And we just got another man, he's an electrician. We're working with him and training him. Bismillah, and he will work in the masjid and the county will pay him. Because you pay taxes. Or should I say the government takes your taxes? You don't pay, you, if you had a choice, you probably wouldn't pay tax. But the government takes your taxes and now with this partnership, we're using it to build self-sufficiency. To remind you, alhamdulillah, you are not a believer if you do not want for your brother what you want for yourself. Bidnillah, you should be proud to be a part of this community. And so I'm going to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O oh Allah, lighten our burden, Ya Allah. Allahumma hadina fi man hadayt, wa afina fi man afayt. وَتَوَلَنَا فِي مَنْ تَوَلَيْتِ O oh Allah, lift our burden, Ya Allah, that you might lift our burden, walhamdulillah, in this life and on the day of judgment. O oh Allah, help us to remove the burden from our neighbors, walhamdulillah, that you might remove our burden on the day of judgment. O oh Allah, help us to live the Qur'an, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, help us to walk in the footsteps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Allah, cause us to live lives of benefit, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, increase us in maslaha, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, to bring benefit, alhamdulillah, to ourselves and our society, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, that we might establish what is right and forbid what is wrong. O oh Allah, we ask for your mercy and your peace on us and our families, on our children. Ya Allah, to preserve our husbands and our wives. Ya Allah, to grant us your rizq on tayyibun, Ya Allah. A righteous rizq, Ya Allah. A righteous income, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, that we might spend in your cause. O oh Allah, that you might forgive us of our sins and give us the reward of your Jannah ma'abrar. O oh Allah, we ask for your mercy and your peace on the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, and on his family and on his companions. And all of the NBA, Ya Allah, and those who follow the way of haqq, Ya Allah, until the day of judgment. Amen. أقول قول هذا استغفر وليكم أكم صلاة. straighten the lines and close the gaps. I'm going to ask you a favor. After Salah, I have a pastor friend here who's going to share with you just a little bit about his journey to the Holy Land and why and how we need to join that struggle for justice in the Holy Land. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to establish his peace and his justice on this earth. Walhamdulillah. Allahu Akbar Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'ubudu Wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ihdini Sirat Al-Mustaqim سراط الذين أنمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والطين والزيتون وطور السنين وهذا البلد الأمين 
لقد خلقنا الإنسان في أحسن تقويم ثم رددناه أسفل سافلين إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات فلهم عجر غير ممنون فما يكذبك بعد بالدين أليس الله بأحكام الهكمين الله أكبر